Welcome everyone. My name is Maria Tranquilli and I'm a program manager at the NASDAQ Entrepreneurial Center. For those of you who may not know, the NASDAQ Entrepreneurial Center is a nonprofit dedicated to enabling entrepreneurs from all over the world to realize their maximum potentials and grow. None of what we do would be possible without all the amazing support from our sponsors, including NASDAQ, Lehigh University, Bank of the West, KPMG, Wilson Sonsini, Woodruff Sawyer, BPM, NZTE, and Microsoft for Startups. We are humbled by their contributions. We will open up for Q&A at the end of this event. Please submit your questions in the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen throughout the presentation. And during these unique times, we are curious around sentiment and how you are feeling as entrepreneurs within our community. We would like to start by taking two different polls to let us know how you are feeling. Launching those po one poll now, how are you feeling? Are you feeling fearful, anxious? Are you surviving or are you feeling optimistic? Please let us know here. Thank you all sharing those results. It looks like it's pretty evenly split, but many people feel like they're surviving currently. Hopefully this, this learn in webinar will help with quell some of those surviving feelings. And then launching our second poll, what exactly is keeping you up at night? Is it finance, sales, or marketing? Is it scaling, pivoting your team, or again, surviving? Please let us know. Wonderful, thank you all sharing those results. It looks like sales is our highest ranked of what is keeping you up at night. So again, I think that this webinar will help solve some of those questions that might be keeping you up. Thank you all for contributing there. So without further delay, please join me in giving a warm welcome to our special guest. She has been voted one of the top 15 business growth experts to watch by Currency Fair. She's a top sales experts to follow by LinkedIn, and a top 41 motivational sales speaker, Meredith Elliott Powell, business strategist and keynote speaker. Meredith, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm excited to be here, and I love that um, sales hit the top of the, uh, of the poll. I know that we are gonna be doing some live Q&A uh, at the end of this, so please stay on till the end, because I am covering fourth quarter today, but um, I want you to get a good night's sleep. So I am so happy to hang on and answer any and all questions um, you have about sales, because this really is a great opportunity right now to be selling. There's a lot of opportunity in the marketplace, but how you go about it, where you focus, and what you do all needs to really change. So um, again, we're gonna focus on how to finish strong, but, uh, but as we end this up, I'm really happy to answer any um, questions. So I know Maria, you're gonna come back on and join me and sort of field um, uh, some of those questions. So uh, looking forward to that. Thank you, Meredith, handing it to you. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, and bring up my, um, my slides. All right. Um, Okay, as I said, I am excited to be here and really excited to talk about uh, this subject. The fourth quarter is my favorite quarter of, um, of the year. And I find that, uh, in fact, kind of interesting, right before we got on this webinar, I was working with my accountability partner on what strategies I'm going to put into place and what I'm going to do to really up my game for the fourth quarter. I really had a pretty good 2020, but I also know that what I do in the fourth quarter of this year, how I spend the rest of October, November, and December is not only gonna, not only gonna dictate how I finish the year, but more importantly, it is going to lay the groundwork for, um, for, 2000, uh, for 2021. So let's go ahead and, um, and dive in. The power of the fourth quarter, um, sales strategies you need, uh, you need to finish strong. I started speaking about this subject um, a couple of years ago because I actually spent years as a sales leader in organizations. And what I found was when it came to fourth quarter, 
Um, it was the fourth quarter was the time of year when most sales professionals, most business owners started to take their foot off the gas, but it's the time of the year when you actually want to put your foot um, uh, on the gas. Again, the more you do in the fourth quarter, the, um, the better positioned you're going to be to grow your business in, um, in 2021. And goodness help us, 2021 has got to be a better year than 2020 was, right? So we want to spend um, this time really getting ourselves and really being prepared. Now, um, again, that is me right there. I am a business strategist, keynote speaker, award-winning author. Um, that's just one of the books that I put down there. Before we even roll into this, though, I am a big believer. In fact, I could do a whole webinar just on the importance of networking. I really believe that if you build your network, it will change your life. So down there, um, you will see my social networking sites as well as my website. If we are not connected, it would really be an honor to be connected to you. If you connect with me, I will definitely connect back and we can keep the sales conversation going. All right, enough about, enough about me. Let's talk about the fourth quarter. What's the problem with the fourth quarter and why do most people not use the fourth quarter as effectively as possible. I mean, I don't know about you, but I feel like this year, the fourth quarter came around like that. I have been keeping a journal since COVID hit, since about three days into um, our, our shutdown. And I just noticed last night when I was working on this that, um, that when I went to enter in my journal, I'm at day number 213 that I have been tracking everything that has happened day in and day out since COVID hit. I cannot believe 213 days have gone this fast. So one of the problems with the fourth quarter is that it comes around so fast. I mean, we start the year and before we can even blink, it is October. The other thing is a lot of times by the time fourth quarter hits, you've either hit your goals or you haven't hit your goals. And chances, chances are this year you've not hit your goals or you lowered your goals and you actually hit them. But, uh, but the point is by the time fourth quarter comes along, we're tired. And especially this year, we have dealt with so much change. We have worked so hard. As we get into the fourth quarter, if you've hit your goals, you're kind of ready to relax. If you haven't hit your goals, you're kind of waving the white flag and you're just sort of giving up. The other thing is that people are busy. Our prospects are busy. Our customers are busy. Fourth quarter, you've got to deal with end of the year. You've got to deal with inventory. You've got to deal with strategic planning for the, for the following year. People are just crazy as it comes to, um, to the end of the year. It feels like everything's kind of coming in on us and we've got so much on our plate. We've got holiday disruption. We've got lots of holiday disruption. It feels like this year that Halloween probably started in August. Thanksgiving, um, if you celebrate it, will start in, uh, you know, start it starts now. And all the holidays that happen in December just, um, just come on earlier and earlier and earlier. And add all that together and it just doesn't seem like there's enough time in the fourth quarter to do all the things that we need, um, you know, we need to do. Add to that the fact again that you're tired, you're ready to take some time off, and um, and you've got to deal with your own holidays, families, and all the other obligations um, that you have. You know, I don't know about you, but I heard the other day that if you want to order um, presents for Hanukkah or for Christmas you better start now. And if you, don't, if you don't start like right now, there's a chance that they won't even come. So when you think about it, just the stress of the holidays and everything that are coming, the last thing we're really thinking about when it comes to fourth quarter is growing our businesses. But what I want you to walk away from this webinar with, what I want you to understand is that there's so much value in the fourth quarter. And the last thing that you wanna be doing right now is taking your foot, whoops, is taking your foot off the gas. You want to be that one um, person in your industry, in your niche, that's wearing that red suit. 
that is different than everybody else. So rather than taking your foot off the gas, you're putting your, um, your foot on it. I think that of all the work that you could do in any quarters of the year, doing work in the fourth quarter has the highest return on investment. The more that you put in effort right now, the stronger your business is going to be in every single quarter next, um, next year. So, so why is there value in the fourth quarter? Why does the fourth quarter matter? Why do I need to convince you? Because um, believe me, by the time you get off this webinar, you're going to have a plan. You're going to have a strategy. You're going to know exactly what you need to do with the fourth quarter. But the thing that I know from doing what I do for a living is if you want people to take action, you better answer why. So why does fourth quarter matter? Why do we want to be putting our time and our energy there? Well, here's one big secret is your competition. They slow down. They take vacation. They back off. In other words, this is the least crowded quarter you are ever going to sell in. It's the least competitive quarter you are ever going to sell in. If you're looking for an opportunity to get in the door with, um, with clients, with customers, with prospects, this is, the, this, is the, this is your best chance because your competitors are just not going to be as diligent in the fourth quarter. And the reason is, for all the other reasons that I told you at the beginning, they've either hit their goals or they haven't. They've either decided they're done for the year or they've just given up. They've got to deal with holidays and scheduling. They're worried about bothering people because they think that they're busy. They've got a lot on their plate, other things that they've got to deal with. They're going into strategic planning sessions, all the other stuff they've got to do. So what I want you to understand is the fourth quarter matters because it's the least crowded market you will ever sell in. It's easy follow-up from, from first quarter, second quarter, and third quarter. The beauty of fourth quarter is that you've been selling all year. And even if you weren't great at selling this year, you at least did some business. You planted some seeds. And it is so easy in the fourth quarter to just check in with people, just to follow up with them. You are reaping everything that you have sown since the beginning of this year. So it's easy, easy follow-up. I mean, aren't you starting to love the fourth quarter? It's not as competitive and it's easier to follow up because you've already done, you've already done the work. Holidays are the perfect relationship builder. We're going to get into a strategy around this because most people back away from selling during the holidays. And I want you to see these as the ultimate opportunity to really, really build um, relationships, to really get in there, separate yourself from the competition, but use it as an opportunity to move business forward rather than back away from it. Listen, I'm going to talk about holidays because here's the problem with business growth. We hit Halloween, which is okay. You know, we kind of keep the momentum going there. But the second that Thanksgiving hits, whether you celebrate it or not, um, people really start to um, people really start to, uh, to start to back away, and then you go into the, all the holidays that happen in um, in December all over the world, and they're so spread out and they're so different and they're so diverse that people start to just shut down and start to back away. And what I want you to do is use the holiday season as an opportunity to engage and work more with customers. And I'm going to show you, um, I'm going to show you how. And again, what you, um, what you do in the fourth quarter will determine your success in the first quarter, and it's going to determine your success in 2021. I'm going to talk in a little bit about how if you don't effectively use the first quarter, First, the fourth quarter, you're going to have dead time in, um, in January. And that dead time is going to cost you not only in the first quarter, but it's going to cost you in, um, in the second quarter. Um, the other thing is that you're going to get the unexpected sale. I'm going to show you a few tips and a few strategies 
that, um, that are going to present an opportunity for you to get a sale out of left field. I call it getting it out of nowhere, getting it out of thin air. But you're going to get these little gifts of sales by just planting the seeds and doing what you need um, to do. The other thing is that you're going to get to take advantage of money left in the budget. Believe it or not, you have a lot of clients, a lot of prospects that still have money left in the budget. And if you're not selling straight through that first fourth quarter, then you're going to miss the opportunity to take advantage of that. I got lucky with just one of those um, today. I called one of my, uh, my past clients. I hadn't followed up with her since, uh, since March um, of this year. I made a quick call to her uh, when COVID um, hit, kind of checking in and she had a lot on her plate and was super busy and really wasn't interested in doing anything. So I just did a quick check-in with her this morning and said, hey, Shirley, this is Meredith. You got five minutes to talk. We jumped on the um, phone for five minutes. I said, I just wanted to check in, kind of see where you are um, with things. And she said, oh my gosh, I'm so glad you called. She said, I've got X amount of money left in the budget. What can you do for me before December um, 30th of this year? And so I was able to capitalize on the fact that she needed to use the money that was left in her budget. If I hadn't made that call, if I hadn't reached out, I never would have gotten, um, I never would have gotten that opportunity. So again, the fourth quarter, in my humble opinion, is the most important um, quarter in the sales cycle. It's the most important quarter, the one you really want to take advantage of. Um, all right. I have spent enough time talking about why fourth quarter matters. So drum roll, please. Let's go ahead and let's um, take a look at what we need to do to harness the power of the fourth quarter. It's the fourth quarter, baby. Let's get ready for a strong finish because if you finish strong, you are going to start. You are going to come out of the gate with, um, with power and with momentum. And that power and momentum is going to position you for success in 2021. Listen, I, I, again, I want to stress the fact that um, sales has really been wonky in, um, in 2020. Some people are doing it. Some people aren't. A lot of people that I'm experiencing really aren't selling, um, you know, really aren't selling effectively. Um, so, uh, so even if, even if you haven't been selling a lot this year, um, I want you to um, uh, I want you to understand that we can make up for it now, uh, right now. If if you have really been somebody who's had your foot off the gas for um, for most of the year, don't worry about it. I'm only worried about now going forward. And even if you haven't had a successful sales year we're still going to do some things in the fourth quarter that are really going to position you um, to be successful, not only in finishing out the year, but in finishing out um, uh, 2021. Listen, um, I, I want to say before we get into this, and I know you're probably dying and thinking, oh, I wish you'd just jump into these sales strategies, but I'm kind of on a mission in life to make people really comfortable uh, with sales because if I can sell and I can be good at it, Anybody can sell and anybody can be good at it. I started in sales um, 20 years ago and I took it as a job because uh, as a young female at that time, I needed a job where I could make a lot of money because I was the breadwinner due to some unfortunate circumstances in, um, in my household for my family. Um, I had never sold before in my life and I was terrified of it. In fact, my mother had raised me that it was rude to bother people. So I thought every icky thing you can think about sales. And literally on the first day when I landed the job and I had to make my first sales call, I was selling to doctors. I literally got physically sick at my stomach. I thought I can't possibly do that. Now, luckily for me, it was a choice between feeding my family and dealing with my own nerves and anxiety. And it was more important for me to deal with my own nerves and anxiety than it was, um, I, could, I could deal with that more than I could deal with disappointing my family. 
So I say that um, I'm so passionate about sales now. I love it. I feel like it's the best career ever. So if I can learn to sell, if I can be good at it, anybody can be good um, at sales. And if you're already good at sales, I'm about to give you some tricks and some steps and things that you need to do to really, um, to really harness the power of this fourth quarter. All right. So let's go ahead and um, let's jump in and let's start to carve in to these um, strategies. Number one, if you want to harness the power of the fourth quarter, you need to make a plan. Look, there isn't a lot of time in the fourth quarter. I mean, number one, it just goes quick. But by the time you add in the holidays, people trying to get in last minute um, vacations and the things that are going on, you need to use every single day of the fourth quarter as effectively and as efficiently as you possibly can. So what I need you to do, as hard as it is, is I need you to carve an hour out of your day next week, and I just need you to make a plan. I don't need it to be perfect. I don't need it to be wordsmith. I don't need it to be long. I just need you to know where you're headed and what you want to achieve in the fourth quarter. First of all, you need to set a goal. You need to set a goal for the fourth quarter. How many sales calls do you want to make? How many customers do you want to interact with? Um, you know, uh, is there revenue that you need to close in the fourth quarter? Now, here's how I think about goals. A lot of times goals upset people because they, they you know, don't like to be held accountable things or goals scare them or, or, they're, or they're kind of afraid. But a goal is without a goal, you don't know where you're headed. And you don't have to reveal this goal to anybody else. You just need to have this goal out there for yourself. But once you establish that goal, you need to ask yourself, who will you call on and, um, and why and when? So you need to make a list of who you're going to call on. Okay. I suggest of making a list of, of, you know, anywhere from 60 to 75 people that you are going to call on for the fourth quarter. All right. So I want you to reach out to make a list of, I want you to divide it into three areas. I want you to make a list of existing customers. This is your low hanging fruit. These are people you've either done business with in the last year or, um, or in the last two years, right? So who are you going to call on in this, in this fourth quarter? Then who are the prospects you are going to call on? Now for my fourth quarter prospect list, I come up with 30 names of people I've either been reaching out to or people that reached out to me, but I didn't close the deal. And then I always add in some referral sources that I'm going to call on for, um, for the fourth quarter. Um, so you want to create that list. And the reason you want to create that list is because I don't want you to have to think about who you're going to call on. I want you to be able to create that list and then be able to every day go and pick the names off of, of there. So you need to think about proactively in this fourth quarter, who am I going to call on and why? Why did you put those people on your list? Don't waste your time calling on people in the fourth quarter who aren't in your target market. Don't waste your time in your fourth quarter calling on people who are strictly cold calls. Look, you've done so much work up to this point, um, engaging and talking to prospects and clients. Use the fourth quarter as the opportunity to, to re-engage those, those customers and those prospects and those referral sources. And then you need to schedule it. Then you need to actually put it down as a time. How many calls are you going to make a day? I typically make two to three sales calls every day. Now, for some of you, you may say, that's all she makes? Yeah, look, I'm running a business. I got other things to do. But I find that if I make two to three sales calls every single day, then that amounts to cumulatively, that's a lot of calls. The other thing is by keeping the number small, I do it consistently. I mean, I like to think of this stuff like exercise. If I say that I've got to exercise for two and a half hours every day, I'm not going to do it. But I can carve out 30 minutes every day of my life to move and to get some exercise. Keep things small. Consistency, I think, is one of the sexiest words in sales. Because if you are consistent, good things will happen. 
then you've got to ask yourself, how will you add value? How will you relationship build for the sale? I don't want you to reach out in the fourth quarter and just ask for the business. I want you to reach out in the fourth quarter in a way that shows you care and that you're interested. So here are some things that I want you to, um, to think about is just like I told you, I reached out to, um, to uh, my client, Shirley, this morning. And the way that I reached out to her was I just said, hey, Shirley, I just wanted to check in, see what you're thinking um, for the end of the year and what plans you've got for 2021. I also offered to send her um, an article based on some trends that I see happening in her industry right now. So my sales call was more focused on her and adding value to her than it is on, um, on me gaining my sales call. I got to tell a uh, getting my sales call. I got to tell you, I've got a, uh, uh, I reached out for some, um, some research uh, that I'm, I'm looking to do for, um, for, for my business. And, um, and, uh, and the guys that have been calling on me I've been looking at three firms to do the research. And one of the guys actually reached out to me and said, have you made a decision yet? I need your deal to close in order to hit my sales goals for October. Now, he was in the running for me to give him my business. But the moment he sent me that email, he signaled me that this relationship will always be more about him than it will be about me. Why do I care if he makes his sales goals for October? And it certainly tells me where his priorities are. So I share that with you, story with you. It's going to be extreme. It's extreme, but I want you to understand that, um, that, uh, that sales needs to be more about investing in your customer than it is about your customer investing in you. So I want you to think about the ways that you could reach out and add value that are relationship building. What's your reason for calling on somebody? If your reason for calling on them is to get them to buy something, they can feel that energy off of you. You want your reason to be calling them because you've got something that can help them. I did a couple of uh, sales calls yesterday where um, a couple of my referral sources, I just did a program that is just a really cool and innovative idea. And I felt like that program would be perfect for some of their clients. It could really add value and position them as an innovative provider to their clients. So the way that I reached out was with, here's a really cool idea that I think you could add to your list of products and services that I think would really position you as different in the marketplace. Now, I still get the benefit of reaching out, but I'm reaching out in a way that's value add. Here's the other thing is that when you reach out in a way that's value add, you're reaching out in a way that feels comfortable for you. If it doesn't feel good to reach out to try to get somebody to buy from me, but I get excited about reaching out in a way that's going to help people. Um, what will your holiday strategy be? Again, I really want you to use the holidays as an opportunity. And I love holidays because holidays are a time that you can, um, you can deliver a, a, a gift, even if you can't do it in person these days. You can send people um, a gift and follow up with them and say, you know, did, did you receive that gift. You know, it's a great time kind of a week before holidays to decide who you're going to call on, what small incremental thing are you going to give them, and then be able to reach out and, um, and you know, and provide that to them. And I'm going to give you a, a secret before we, um, before we close out here today, is how to use that holiday strategy to plant the seeds to get the meetings the very first week in January. And when will you meet, engage with them, and update your strategy with your team? So really, I want you to take that list of, um, of you know, people that you're going to call on, and then I want you to calendar out when you're going to call on them. I want you to make this so routine that you don't even have to think about it um, uh, every day. You just know that on Wednesday, you're going to call on uh, Ahmad and you're going to call on Tina. And on, um, you know, on Thursday, you're going to call on Sebastian and you're going to call on Monique. 
you know what you're going to do. You're going to take the thinking, you know, straight, um, straight out of it. So you need that hour on your calendar um, uh, uh, to plan. You can see that I keep a list right here on my desk. Um, uh, and basically what I do is I just have my plan. This is everybody that I'm calling on for the, for the fourth quarter. I've got it front and back. And then I just went in and calendared it. So if you got up with me tomorrow morning and you sat down with me um, at my desk, the first thing you would see is I look nothing like this first thing in the morning, but you would see that I don't even have to think about who I'm going to call on that day because it's right there on my calendar. And that's what I want for you. I want it to be right there on, um, on your calendar. Um, then you just need to reach out. You just need to do it. You need to commit to do it every single day. You've got to schedule the calls, prioritize the calls, and then you need to simply just absolutely positively do it. Again, I don't want to see you making, trying to make 20 calls a day or 15 calls a day. I want you to keep it small because if you keep it small, you'll do it consistently every single day. Nobody can make the excuse that they don't have the time to reach out to try to call on two people but you can make the excuse that you don't have three hours in the day to try to block to do, um, to do 20 um, calls. Then I need you to track and I need you to measure it. If you use a customer relationship management system, great. If you don't, no big deal. Just keep it on a spreadsheet, keep it on, um, keep it on uh, you know, just keep it on your calendar. But at least once a month at the end of October, at the end of November, and at the end of December, I want you to review and adjust. In other words, I want you to have a meeting with yourself where you ask yourself the questions, what's working with my strategy, what's not, what are the seeds, weeds, and needs, and what do I need to do to adjust my strategy? So for example, let's assume that we were going to sit down at the end of October and we have made, I don't know, 20 sales calls. We're going to go back and we're going to look at each one of those calls that, we, that we've made. And we're going to ask ourselves, what did we do this month that really worked? What are the seeds that we need to keep planting and we need to do more of? For example, you might have, um, you might have really adhered to your list. You had made a good list and what, something you need to be doing more of is really paying attention to whatever criteria you used for people to get on your list, because that worked really well. Something else that maybe worked really well for you is that you set aside time at noon every single day to make those, um, you know, to make those calls. And that worked really well. Then weeds are, what are you doing that's choking you up, that's holding you back, that isn't, isn't working? Maybe you're um, not reaching out with the right strategy. Maybe you're calling um, you know, on the wrong customers because they're not being very, uh, very um, uh, responsive. Maybe your value add um, idea isn't really a very good value add idea. And what do you need um, that you're not doing that could be even more, um, more valuable? Maybe you need more time to make um, the calls. Maybe you need a few less prospects and a few more customers, and maybe you need to spend a little bit more time with your, um, with your referral strategies. In other words, what I want you to do is I want you to adjust your strategy. At the end of every single month, I want you to take the time and really reflect on what you're doing and ask yourself, what's working, what isn't working, and what do I need to be doing more of that I'm not, that I'm not doing? Um, last year, when I was going through this on my own strategy, what I felt was when I did my first meeting with myself was I was doing a lot of calls that were busy, but I, they weren't really productive. And when I went back and analyzed it, I hadn't done a very good job of putting the right customers and the right prospects on my list. I was more checking the box to make the sales call rather than really making sure it was a valuable conversation. So what I needed to, to do more of was be more diligent and think more about who I was calling on and why I chose them to make that list. And once I did that, I started to get more results from, um, from, 
uh, from my sales call. So having that meeting and adjusting your stuff, you're really your best sales coach. And you shouldn't just do this in the fourth quarter. You should do this all the time. Now, again, I want you to understand that the holidays are your friend. And you need to think about the holidays that your particular prospects, customers, and clients celebrate. And then I want you to think about how can you use those holidays to engage more with your um, clients and prospects rather than less than. Maybe it's about sending them a holiday card. Maybe you do a great um, video greeting to them and tell them that you hope that they have a, um, a, wonderful, um, a wonderful holiday season. Every year for my best um, clients that make this list, the people that I really have enjoyed doing business with and I want to do business with in 2021, I have these special cookies made that have their faces on, um, on the cookies. And, um, and I have always delivered them in person in the past. This year, um, I'm gonna deliver them uh, via mail, but I'm reaching out with a video message that says, you know, hey, Hank, thanks for an amazing, um, you know, 2020. I'm really looking forward to, uh, to working together in 2021. This is just a little gift hoping that you and your family enjoy a wonderful holiday season. So I'm not backing off during the holidays. I'm coming on during the holidays. But the other thing that I'm doing the holidays is that I'm positioning success. And what I mean by that is the other part of that message is, Hank, I hope you and your family have an amazing holiday season. Take some time off, relax, enjoy. And just know that you're going to get a call from me the very first day in, um, in 2021, because I want to set the time now and the expectation that we're going to meet so that I can be doing everything I can do to, um, to help you make 2021 your best year on record. Now, understand what I did there. I used the holidays as a time to get one more touch point with my prospect or my customer or my referral source, right? So I want them as they close out the year to know, I get it. I get that it's holidays. I get that it's the end of the years. And I'm just, you know, thanking them for having had an amazing holiday season. But I am also planting the seed that they are going to hear from me as soon as 2021 hits. And the reason I want to do that is because I want them to know I'm in their corner. I'm going to help them make 2021 a great year. The other thing that I'm doing is I'm making sure that they understand that they're going to get a call from me on January 2nd because I'm not going to let January 2nd be a dead day of business for me. Far too often, here's the problem with the first quarter of the year. We start the first quarter of the year thinking, oh, wow, everybody's just getting back from the new year. I can't possibly bother people. And before you know it, it's the second week in January. Well, by the second week in January, you're starting to scramble. And before you know it, it's the end of January and you've barely made any sales calls. By positioning success right now, you're setting yourself up for appointments to happen the very first week in January. You're starting that year off with a bang and they're thinking in their mind, I'm ready. I'm ready to meet with Meredith. She's got a plan. She's going to help me. So I'm using the holiday strategy to say, thank you. I appreciate you. Have a wonderful time with your family. Know that the beginning of January, the first person you're going to hear from is me because I want to work together to make 2021 your best year on record. So you've got to position that success. It's all about overfilling your sales funnel. Using these, look, I don't worry about closing business in the fourth quarter. In fact, we could have another webinar about why you need to hit your sales goals by the end of third quarter. But, but we're using this time to get so much moving through the pipeline and so that we can really start 2021 off with a bang. And if you start 2021 off with a bang, then by the end of third quarter in 2021, you're going to more than met your goals. You're going to have exceeded it. 
I want you to let go of thinking about closing the sale. I think this is where we get so tripped up with sales. We worry about closing the sale. If you have so much um, sales calls moving through your pipeline, then you don't have to worry about closing the sale. Enough will close. I don't want you to worry about closing business in fourth quarter. In fact, take that out of your mind. What I want you to think about and what I want you to do is to reach out and touch as many people as you possibly can and touch them in a way that, um, that is value add and lets them know you're respectful of the fact that this is fourth quarter, but you're planting the seeds to kick the year off strong. That, that you appreciate the business that you did in 2020. Even with prospects, I say, I just appreciate the fact that I was able to engage, I was able to connect with you. And I look forward to talking further and moving more business forward as we kick off 2021. So let go of the pressure that you need to close the sale. Believe me, people feel the energy coming off of you. And if you're too worried about closing the sale, then people are gonna feel that. If you're nervous, they're gonna be nervous. If you believe customers aren't interested, then believe me, they won't be interested. But if you believe that you have something that can really add value, then people are gonna feel that energy and, and, um, and passion coming off of you. You know, the other great thing that you should do with the fourth quarter of the year is that you should be reaching out and just touching base and asking a couple of questions. Um, tell me a little bit about how this year has been for you and your business. What have you really been focused on? What has the biggest challenge been? And, you know, what are you focused on for 2021? What do you need most to happen in 2021? If you just ask those questions, you're going to get unbelievable feedback that's going to give you the information you need to be relevant in the fourth quarter, but to really be relevant as you move into 2021. Because imagine I reached out and I asked you those questions. I said, Christina, um, you know, this has been amazing. I know that we haven't done business this year, but I have loved engaging and talking um, with you. I just wanted to close out the year by asking just a couple of questions. Tell me a little bit about how this business this year has been for you. What are you focused on in 2021 and what's been your biggest challenge? Now, once I know the answers to those questions, I'm able to turn around in 2021 and say, Christina, hope you had a great holiday season. I really put a lot of thought into, into the answers that you gave me um, in December of this year. And I've got some ideas and solutions that can really help you solve that challenge and really help you achieve your goals in 2021. Now, Christina is going to respond because I've been so relevant. I've taken exactly what she said and I've responded to that with my products and services. So listen, we have covered a lot in this, um, in this webinar and I want to make sure that I leave the opportunity to, uh, to answer your questions and fill in any of the blanks that we've left out. But I want to wrap up by saying that this is the quarter you need to take advantage of. And the best way to take advantage of it is to get a plan. Who are you going to call on? Why did those people make that list? This isn't the time to be adding a bunch of new people. You've done a lot of work to it. So what are the ways that you can reach out to add value and build that relationship? Take an interest in your customers right now. Ask good questions and let go of worrying about closing the sale. Use this to get the information you're going to need to go into 2021 strong. Use the holiday season to be visible, to be there, to be in front of them, but most importantly, to plant the seeds that you are going to show up in 2021 early to help them accomplish their goals. So. All right, Ray, I'm going to turn it back over to you and see what questions um, uh, we have. That's been a lot of information really fast. Meredith, it's actually been a fantastic amount of information. We have lots <laughs> of questions coming through. Thank you so much for such great overview and, and depth. We love hearing about sales specifically. Um, so everyone with us right now, please make sure you submit your questions in the Q&A function and or the chat 
um, on the bottom of your screen. We would love to share your questions with Meredith live. So Meredith, if you are ready, I have quite a few questions that we have from our audience that were both pre-vetted and live. Um, fantastic. So are you ready, Meredith? I'm ready. Wonderful. So this is actually, I think, a question about mindset. How might I get unstuck? What are some of the first steps I can take to shake off feeling stuck in my sales process during this fourth quarter? Yeah, um, boy, I get a lot of questions about, um, about mindset. And I'm really, really glad that you asked that because mindset is, um, is very important. I mean, I believe that what people are really buying from us is energy right? Like I can go online and buy a product from a, from a website. So what they're buying is how passionate I am about my product and service. So I have two strategies for you. Number one is you really need to understand your why. I bet that you're clear on what you sell, the products and services, but are you clear on why you sell them? And let me give you the difference. The products and services that I sell is I'm a coach, I'm a business strategist, and I'm a keynote speaker. Okay, people need that stuff. But why I sell it is because I am on a mission. I am passionate to help people learn to turn all of this uncertainty into opportunity. I want them to see uncertainty as not something that stops growth, but actually propels it. Do you feel the energy difference when I know my why? So if you're stuck with your mindset, you really need to focus on your why. Everybody on here is an unbelievable salesperson. If I was coming to your town tomorrow and I was going to ask you where I should go to dinner, you would get really excited telling me about your favorite restaurant and you would have no hesitation, but you wouldn't care if I went there or not. You're not vested in me going there. The other is your why is you want to make sure that I have a great experience and a great meal in your hometown. You're not stuck in your head about me buying spaghetti and meatballs from a certain person. You're focused on me and your why focuses you on your customer. You got to be on a mission with what you sell and that'll get you unstuck. Thank you so much, Meredith. That's fantastic. Um, we'll move into, this is a great question. I think very relevant. It's from Miguel in our audience. Do you have any advice on clients who are experiencing Zoom fatigue? How can I get them re-engaged so that I can, in fact, provide them value? What do you think, Meredith? Yeah, I think every, I think everybody's um, everybody's experiencing um, uh, Zoom uh, fatigue. So there's um, there's a couple of things. Number one is go back to the old-fashioned telephone. I can't tell you how much traction I get right now because I reach out and I say, you know, Maria, I'd love to, um, I'd love to talk to you. Let's do this the old fashioned way. Let's, um, let's jump on a phone call. Um, and then, you know, if it warrants it, we'll get on a Zoom later, but go back to the telephone. The other is I find that I get a lot better attendance with a, um, with a Zoom call if I send an agenda ahead of time. I let the client know I'm not going to be wasting their time, that I can do this in 20, 30 minutes. And I let them know in the agenda the value that's going to be in it for them. So for example, I don't just say from nine to time 10, we're going to do opening remarks or anything. I say in that, in, you know, from nine to nine, 10, I'm going to focus on these two challenges and the solutions we can bring to the table. People are fatigued when we are not relevant. I will give you my time all day long if you can make me money, save me money, or give me peace of mind. So that agenda out in front helps people understand that this is going to be worth their time to jump on a Zoom call. Oh, I love that. People will give you their time if you are relevant. That's fantastic, yes. Meredith. Absolutely. Oh they, they will. They will all day long. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that wisdom. Let's see, we have a, quite a few other questions. I think you may have answered this, but maybe you can dive in a little bit deeper because we did receive this here in the chat. How would I decrease my sales cycle lead time? What are one or two strategies that you might suggest? Yeah, um, you need to, if you wanna decrease your lead time um, and you wanna shorten uh, the sales cycle, there's two things you need to do. Number one is you need to build um, your brand and your reputation in the marketplace. Um, people do business with people they have heard of and about. 
And if people see you as the authority, somebody who already has the solutions um, and the answers. So the way that you do that is you need to know what your for your the prospects and things that you're calling on for your niche, the industry that you focus on. What are their top 10 challenges? What are they really worried about right now? And then I want you to start producing articles, videos. I want you to post those things on social media, as well as when you're reaching out, one of my favorite ways to reach out to people for a cold call is to say, you know, um, Maria, I've been working a lot in your industry and the top trends that we're seeing as issues that companies like yours are worried about are these 10. Um, we have some solutions and ideas to those. Now, all of a sudden, again, it's, it's back to relevancy, but you've got to build that reputation in the marketplace. The other is to shorten the sales cycle, you need to, be, you need to really understand your client avatar, your ideal client. Everybody on this call has an ideal client, and the way to know that is to write down your top 10 customers. If you write down your top 10 customers, people who pay, pay you, buy from you, love you, and send you business, you'll start to see themes about them. You'll start to see they're in a certain age range. They live in a certain geographic location. Maybe they're family oriented people. Maybe they're, you know, um, uh, millennials. Uh, you know, you'll start to see themes about them. Maybe they hold certain positions, but the better you understand your customers, the better you'll choose your prospects. And typically lead times are long because you're calling on people that aren't exactly suited to buy from you. Thank you, Meredith. Those are two great tactics to shorten lead time. Um, and I just want to ask everyone in the audience and say thank you again so much for being with us. We would love to have you fill out a survey from NASDAQ Entrepreneurial Center and Meredith, we would love to hear your feedback and to see exactly what you loved about this session and what else we might be able to provide you. So we will make sure to put that link in the chat. Uh, Meredith, we have another great question um, from someone in our audience. How about if you're doing direct to customer business or B2C business? How might we translate a sales approach like this for that type of business? Yeah, I think that um, uh, if you're doing if you're doing B2C, there's two things you need to be doing. And and number one is B2C, you have got to be building your reputation in um, in the marketplace. You have really got to be elevating um, your thought, uh, your thought leadership. Um, customers and the general public need to see you as the known um, as the known resource and solution um, that people go to for this. That's going to help you build your list. Um, and, and things like that. The second is that, um, is that as, you, as you target emails um, and things that you're sending out to people, really focus in this, for, in this fourth quarter of the year in reaching out in, um, in ways that um, you can adopt a lot of these strategies. Think about um, the list and the people that you're going to reach out and call on. What is your strategy to, um, to make targeted and consistent calls, you know, even though they're going to be in large groups, even though they're going to be posts, what are those going to look like in October? What are those going to look like in November? What are they going to look like in December? What messaging are you going to do and how are you going to sign up people now? to do, you know, to, for, the, for the kickoff that you're going to have in the first week in, um, in January. So you take all the strategies we talked about today, you just do them to a little broader audience. And I feel you because I sell B2B, but I also sell B2C. So I'm planting the seeds and I'm doing all the things. Like I've got a series of webinars that I'm doing for the end of the year that are all about value add ways that you can, um, you know, that, that help my customers solve their problems. So I'm building my list. I'm keeping myself going right, um, right through the, uh, you know, right through the end of the year. I love this, Meredith. So actually to build off of the value add, we have a great question here. Would you be able to give us some examples of good value adds, let's say for an early stage company, maybe, maybe broad examples? Yeah, exactly. So, you know, um, great value adds are, um, are anything that you could produce that solve your customer's challenge. Like for example, um, I produced a value add that's called um, 16 ways to stay in touch without being annoying. 
It's for people that I deal with that, um, that struggle with sales follow-up. So a lot of times I'll reach out to people and say, hey, you know, this is Meredith Elliott Powell. I've been working quite a bit um, in, uh, in your industry um, lately. I'd love to set up a, a call and connect. And by the way, I've got, this, um, I've got this tool that would be great for your sales team. It's called 16 Ways to Follow Up Without Being Annoying. So it's any little giveaway that you could do. Um, I'm getting so many questions on mindset right now that I'm probably going to produce a value add around sales mindset. So listen to what your customers are asking you about and what they're challenged with. And then any small thing that you could do could be a value add. You could also just you could share a copy of, um, you know, of an article that you found in Inc. Magazine or, or, or Fast Company. Um, I do that sometimes. Typically, I like to do my own value add. So for an early stage company, what problems are you solving? What issues are you trying um, uh, to take care of? And then what's a small little piece that you could give to people that would help them solve their problems. I call it the way that people get to try you on for size, right? Like, it's kind of like you're going on a date and if my value add is really good and they say, wow, these are 16 ways to stay in touch with customers without being annoying, I'd like to know more of what this woman does. So that's kind of what you're doing out there is you're giving them a little tease, but it makes a difference. They could utilize it and it helps them and they're seeing, wow, she's got good stuff, I'll try it on. So it's the same in your business. Meredith, thank you so much. I think a lot of people are really interested in specifically that type of strategy. So we have some great feedback. A lot of people are enjoying this. Thank you all so much for your, for your chats and direct messages. Um, feel free to continue that in the chat. I think we have time perhaps for one more question and okay. like some words of inspiration to, to end us off. So Meredith, I know this is on everyone's mind. If Theoretically, we may slip into another shelter in place and or some of our clients are, are actually, um, their budgets have been lowered due to the current situation. What might we do? What steps could we take to ensure that our sales remain strong or continue to grow regardless of the economic situation that's in front of us? Yeah, uh, great question and a great, and a great question um, to, to, to end on. So, um, so Everything that I'm doing now is based off a book I wrote uh, that's coming out in January called Thrive, Turning Uncertainty to Competitive Advantage. And that book is based off studying nine companies that have been in business since late 1700s, early 1800s, and are still in business thriving today. I share that because I want you to understand that business has come through pandemics. So what you need to do is, here's the good news, is even if we go into another shutdown, another shelter in place, businesses have shut down once. They are, they are getting so innovative and so creative and we can't survive another economic shutdown. So people are going to be looking for ways to still keep their business going and still generate them. And at the risk of being redundant, you have to be relevant. You have to be relevant. And what you can do is I want you to right now Start interviewing your best customers. Just do a little poll of two to three questions and ask them what's going on. Then gather that information and go back and say, do my products and services solve this problem? And if they do, how are you positioning it in the marketplace? Everybody, everybody, even if their budgets have been cut, they are spending money right now. They have to. It's the only way you can be in business. But they're only spending money on things that are relevant to them. So you have to reposition your products and services to be relevant in the marketplace. And the only way to know how to do that is to, um, is to talk to your customers. And please don't take your foot off the gas. Keep your foot on the gas. Keep out there because we are going to get through this and you just need to hang on. Meredith, such fantastic words of wisdom. So to wrap up today, I just want to say thank you so much for taking the time to speak to our community, to share your insights and set such a great overview on sales within this fourth quarter. On behalf of NASDAQ Entrepreneurial Center and everyone in attendance today, we sincerely thank you for joining us. I, I love being here and I love this audience and thank you so much. Absolutely, Meredith. We hope to have you back. Thanks. And you're welcome. And everyone, 
still with us, we would love for you to join us in our next webinar events on Tuesday, October 20th at 2 p.m. How to build a brand people love and Thursday, October 22nd, author and residence Kara Golden of Hint Water, author of Undaunted Overcoming Doubts and Doubters. Please join us again um, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you all for being in attendance today.